Hello everyone, my name is Abolon and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to count down top 25 of best indie games. If you love this kind of content, you just simply click on subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Or don't, ignore me, yeah. Watch the video until end. Let's dive to the video. The Witness. Jonathan Blue helps lead this wave of acclaimed indie games with the time blending platformer braid back in 2008. His next game, The Witness, is what happens when one of the gaming's most peculiar indie developers gets a blank check to do whatever he wants. The Witness asks you to solve a series of genuinely clever puzzles, typically about drawing lines inside mazes. Each puzzle is presented as terminals on a mysterious explorable island that plus you call puzzle in and of itself. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Saying anything about Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, aside from its amazing, feels irresponsible. The original was a friendly clever comedy game, satirizing a role of choices player in video games and in our own life. If that game was the Matrix, then this reimagined and expanded version is the Matrix Resurrections, or the second coming of Frog Fraction. If any of that makes sense to you, you're for in a treat. If you're totally confused, just dive in and enjoy a ride. Stray, a game that sees you play as a cute kitty instead of hulking space marine in a kind of wild sewer we love in indie space. So much of Stray resembles a big budget sci-fi adventures, but you see it from a free line perspective, exploring areas and solving puzzles using the skills of typical house cat. There's a button just for meowing. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight combines the best bits of retro gaming's golden age, from Mario's map screen to Castlevania's item to DuckTales pogo stick attack to create the best platformer that never released on the Nintendo Switch. This treasure trove has only grown more interesting over time thanks to the substantial expansion campaigns plus Shovel Knight himself stands tall as arguably the most prolific modern indie mascot. Sea of Stars. Sabotage Studio made a splash with the ninja side scroller throwback, The Messenger. It's a new game, Sea of Stars harkens back in classic 16 bit RPGs like Chrono Trigger. Although the characterization could be deeper, the excellent presentation and satisfying mechanics make for a robust package, something we especially appreciate in indie games. Rogue Legacy 2. The original Rogue Legacy was a standout title in a crowded indie roguelike space. After spending years in early access, the full release of Rogue Legacy 2 already surpasses the original. You still fight your way through dangerous castles, respawning as randomly empowered descendant each time you die. But the increased variety of classes, diverse combat mechanics, improved visuals and extra locations make this bigger and better endless adventures overall. Nobody saves the world. Nobody saves the world's take on action role playing has you transforming into different character, complete with their own strength and weaknesses. Gallop into monsters as a horse summon demons as a necromancer, and pump iron as a bodybuilder. Mix and match powers to create a wacky loadouts as you explore a non linear world full of challenging dungeons to conquer alone or with a friend. Into the Breach. Into the Breach, teeny turn-based tactics battles make you feel like a master strategist. As monsters randomly emerge from the ground, you must come up with new strategies on the fly to save humanity. Fortunately, your mesh squads come equipped with the nifty powers you expect from giant robots. You can play and replay this roguelike until the end of time and still discover new ways to approach each skirmish. Inside. Indie games can get away with radical art styles you'll never see in a big budget affairs. Inside, the follow up to Limbo is another game about controlling a child as they escape puzzling, terrifying abstract set pieces with the haunting, foggy, monochrome atmosphere no other game evoke feeling of dead and deception like inside. Hades. Supergiant Games already had a stellar record with Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre, but the Hades launched the indie team to the entire new galaxy of acclaim. The genius combat system combines diversity goldy powers with involving weapons, 
so you always have new methods to mow down foes. Meanwhile, the intricate unfolding storyline and well-realized characters turn the polarizing repetitive roguelike structure into one of the game's greatest strengths. Freedom Planet the Freedom Planet indie fans made the Dream Sonic the Hitchhawk game saga never could. It was Sonic Mania before Sonic Mania. <laughs> Fast-paced platforming, colorful visuals, and looping level designs show how with the right execution any game formula could be great, no matter how washed up the original mascot is. Dive Kick Dive Kick demonstrates how fighting games don't need complicated combos to have strategic depth. In this two-button game, you can dive and can kick. If you get hit once, you die. But stripping out mechanical complexity, Dive Kick hones in one of the tense competitive mind games that fighting games are truly all about. Plus, it's just hilarious. Disco Elysium, the final cut. Disco Elysium puts you in the shoes of an amnesty cop trying to solve murder mystery in a realistic RPG world that's styled after genre class, such as Boulder's Gate and Plane Escape Torment. You can customize your character by listening to the right voices in your head, while ignoring the others but the true grungy beautiful lies in the powerful political work class story and themes. Cuphead. Cuphead spent years in development, and you can see every second of the hard work on screens. Cuphead's stunning animation perfectly captures the look and feel of classy 1930s cartoon and applies it into retro-style side-scrolling shooter. The bombastic boss fights are a visual feast, you'll never get tired of looking again. That's great, as the challenging difficulty forces you to reply sections again and again. Cassette Beast. Cassette Beast is a stylish RPG that puts its own spin on collecting creatures and pitting them against each other in combat. And as an indie game, it can get away with more radical and experimental ideas than Pokemon ever could. The open world has many quests, the fighting mechanics have extra depth that experienced players crave, and the story veers off in cool, surreal directions. Most importantly, there are some great monster designs, like ghostly ship and living bullets. Carry on. Video games are power fantasies, and what has more power than a deadly monster? Carry on is a horror game where you play as an unstoppable killer blob, not one of the poor doomed souls trying to stop the blob. The awesome, icky animations really sell the feeling of being the tentacle terror. The smart difficulty curves mean you must work just hard enough for your slaughter to feel air. Bug snacks. As the latest project from the minds between Octodad, Bugsnax presents you with a new silly scenario. In Bugsnax, you use wacky traps in to capture monsters made for food. What other games let you shoot ketchup guns to trick walking hamburgers? Beneath the absorbed exterior is surprisingly touching a story that will keep you invested long after initial novelty wears off, and new expansions add even bigger bug snacks to find and feast on. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk leveraged Jet Set Radio's vibe and gameplay in extremely early 2000s Sega Dreamcast like vision of the future. In the cell shaded city, you alternate between extreme sport tricks, graffiti, shenanigans, and fighting cops to prove that your crew is number one. An unofficial follow up to already underground punk favorites is as indie as it gets. Bloodstained Ritual to the Night. Koji Ikarashi didn't create Castlevania, but he did elevate it to a new height with his groundbreaking work on Symphony of the Night and other games that followed that formula. As a Kickstarter project, Bloodstained Ritual to the Night promised even more gothic castles to explore and distortly vampires to whip. The finished project delivers, and then some. You won't even miss the Belmont name. Blazing Chrome. Konami is not making any new good Contra gaming anytime soon. Fortunately, now we can blast robot aliens like it was 1992's with Blazing Chrome. Pixel perfect 60 bit art and razor sharp gameplay capture the chunky pleasure of vintage running and gunning. Multiplayer playable characters give you an excuse to dive back into the fray again and again. 
Blasphemous 2. With its haunted world, dark aesthetic, dense map, and polishing combat, Blasphemous 2 is a 2D Metrovania take on the classic Dark Souls formula. That's an achievement all by itself. However, Blasphemous 2 pushes things further into fascinating use of religion and transgressive and taboo topics ripe for indie exploration. Axiom Verge. You're going to see a lot of games on this list that are throwbacks to beloved retro titles. Indie developers love to put modern twists on classic games. Axiom Verge is a sprawling non-linear sci-fi side-scroller directly inspired by Metroid franchise. The game's brilliant level design matches Nintendo in terms of quality, and its truly alien weapons and abilities makes an already isolating formula feels even more unwerving. 30XX 20XX was a roguelike homage to an original Mega Man series 30XX is its Mega Man X style upgrade. This sequel retains the creative randomized weapon system but adds a graphical facelift and a new tool for level creators and speedrunners. No longer must we rely on Capcom to make our Blue Bomber dreams come true. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Actually, if you enjoyed the video, you can simply just like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave your idea in the comments for us. My name is Abaldon. I will see you in the next episode. Peace.